All right, so in this chemistry experiment, I'm going to show you how to do a titration. So here I have 0.125 molar sodium hydroxide. And here I have hydrochloric acid with an unknown molarity or an unknown concentration. Now some of the new equipment we're going to be using is, this is called a burette. And this is a burette clamp. And here we have a pipette and bulb. So the first step is to take our unknown hydrochloric acid and I want exactly 10 milliliters inside of our flask here. So we're going to use the pipette Right, and I'm going to pull up exactly 10 milliliters. This is a 10 milliliter pipette. Okay, I got a little bit too much so I can expel a little bit. There we go. So there's exactly 10 milliliters, and I'll put it into our flask. Now very, very important with pipettes, um, you never want to turn this upside down because if you do, that hydrochloric acid can go back into the bulb which can sort of corrode away the inside of the bulb, ruining it. So we're not going to do that. We're going to put that aside for now. Now I'm going to put sodium hydroxide into our burette. One thing you're not going to do is if the top of the burette is higher than your head, you're not going to lift it above your head. I'm sure you can guess all the dangers in doing something like this. So I'm going to put on my safety goggles. And I'm going to lower this to this level. If you need it lower, then you can actually remove it from the clamp. And you don't really need to pour in a specific amount. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to pour in enough. go. Now I'll move it back up so that it is just above the flask. I don't want it in the flask because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be swirling the flask and I don't want to chip off the end of the burette. So I want it just above but where it's not going to hit. Okay. Then you can take an initial reading. So we've got zero milliliters up here. We're going to see how much we have to start before I release it. And looks like the initial reading will be 11.2 milliliters. So 11.2 milliliters is our initial reading. Then I'm going to take some phenol failing and I'll put a couple of drops into the hydrochloric acid. So nothing will happen because phenol failing inside of an acid doesn't do anything, but it will turn pink in a base. So now what I'm going to do so I'm going to slowly add some of the sodium hydroxide into the hydrochloric acid. You can see it turned a little bit pink there. So you swirl it and the pink goes away. So let's add a little bit more. A little bit at a time. Don't need to rush this. So you can see it turns pink and you swirl it and it goes clear again. Turning a little bit pink there, swirl it, goes clear. We wanna keep doing this until it stays pink when we swirl it. But we want just that right amount. We don't wanna put in more than that right amount. All right, so it's pink and clear. So we keep going. pink, 
and clear. Pink and clear. Pink. Oh, we're getting very close. It took a little bit more time to turn clear there. It's a little bit at a time. Pink. And it's still going clear, but we're very, very close. There we go. Oh, no, not qu Yes. No, not quite. Just a little bit more. It went clear again. Just a little bit more. About now. Yeah, I think we're good there. Yep, we are good. So we're going to check our final reading, and the final reading appears to be exactly 26 milliliters. So with that information, we can find the difference and figure out exactly how much sodium hydroxide we put in here. Knowing the volume and concentration of the sodium hydroxide and the volume of the initial amount of hydrochloric acid that we have, you can figure out the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. If you don't know how to do that, I do a video explaining that over here in the link. I'll also put a link in the bio and I'll put the information um, that we gathered from this experiment. So try the calculations yourself. Tell me in the comments what you get for the concentration of this hydrochloric acid.